Hmm. Ruto must go. Eh. Because hmm. what are the what is the grounds for removal of a president? Inability to govern. One of the grounds. Hmm. And Ruto is unable to govern. Resetting him to 2022. Whose, whose budget was that? It was his and, and Huru's. Yeah, that was Huru's budget. Huru mm. was the president. Mm. Yeah, look at mm. <coughs> Huru was the president. Mm -hmm. Now, his budget is now supposed to be spending. We are supposed, we are supposed to be in the. Uh, he should be ex executing his third budget. Mm. The one inherited from Huru is unimplemented in the 2021. Yeah. Because Huru virtually from July. Uh, from July, from June 30th, 2023, was basically a lame duck. Mm. We're just holding for somebody. Mm. So then we then who, who implemented that budget. Mm -hmm. The second one was the one that was uh, 2023, mm -hmm. the Finance Act that has been rejected mm -hmm. by the courts. And the uh, third one is the one that was rejected by the public. Mm -hmm. So if he cannot, he cannot pass a budget, mm. he's unable to govern. Because the only policy document you have in a government is a budget. So if your budgets are rejected twice, you lose legitimacy to govern. He cannot govern. And that's one of the grounds in the constitution for removal of a president. So when you say Ruta must go, it's not an idle call. It's a call that this country needs somebody who can govern it. Mm. You've heard what, we, you have heard what we, uh, our sister has said that going back to 2022 is going to create a lot of complications. You see? Why should a republic end up in complications? So the consequences of this decision mm. are dire. And now, the call to reset the republic is anchored, has been given anchorage in law by the courts determining that the budget of 2023 mm was null and void. And they have used the word ab initial. From conception. From conception, it was wrong. It was wrong. Senator, why are you leaving out parliament? Now, parliament has budget-making powers. Mm -hmm. It has budget-making powers. The budget is the one that is has a problem. Parliament has budget-making powers, but the budget-making powers in parliament have been corrupted. Yeah. Both have... by design of the executive and whatever. One of the things is that this budget is supposed to come to the Senate. If you look at Article 249, Clause 3 mm. of the Constitution, it expressly states that Parliament shall ensure that uh, constitutional commissions and uh, independent offices are adequately funded. The only budget-making process is under Article 220 and 221. There's mm. no special other special mechanism. Mm. So, when the Senate does not participate in it, Article 249 is violated. And that's then a failure of the system. Mm -hmm. So, for me, Parliament approved the, that's the National Assembly. It then which approved the, the, that budget. And the National Assembly has entered into bed with the executive that they don't bring the budget to the Senate. They avoid the Senate like the plague. So the, national, the 13th Parliament must go. The House, the National Assembly... The National Assembly of the 13th Parliament yeah. has no business continuing to be in power. One, it was invaded and the people, re re people snatched back the delegated power when they, when, they, when they invaded that house. Number two, it, it has got into bed with the executive and has not allowed the budget to get to the Senate. So the Senate is denied the chance to input in the budget. Then it has come what, up... What did the Senate do about it? There's been litigation which is ongoing. There's litigation ongoing. Mm -hmm. So the Senate then cannot be lobby, lumped together with the National Assembly. So the National Assembly and the executive having gone to bed and made two budgets that have been rejected by the public and by the court, still the public, even through the courts and the public through the street have rejected these budgets. Then this House and the, the executive have no business being in power. Okay. They should go, and we need to have uh, new elections. To institute that house, and to institute the, an executive to govern this country. Otherwise, 
we are with all these achievements will go will uh, will, will will morph into into nothing and uh, as a result the as regards the judgment we have been having this question of auditing the budget and this judgment has made something very very critical clear for me and i'm very grateful for it it's something we've been urging and i urged it very much in my petition mm. and by the way my petition was only when it was allowed 100 percent the way it was the other the allowed sections mine mm. was allowed 100 percent mm. the way it was and among the issues was uh, what is the limitation on the tax making powers of the republic can anybody just wake up and do taxation mm. the court said no there must be a law made by parliament mm -hmm. and ultimately the taxes must be used for public purpose mm -hmm. doesn't end with the law so when you talk of odious debt which we have been saying and when you go to the doctrine of odious debt which was established when the americans invaded cuba in some 17 something and we threw out the spaniards and the Spaniards said borrowed a lot of money in the name of Cuba and were saying, okay, America, you are, new masters. you are the new masters, now you have to pay these debts. The Americans said, we cannot pay money that was not spent on Cuba. Mm. You borrowed money in the name of Cuba, but you spend it on Spain. America, uh, Cuba cannot pay that money. So that's how we established the law, the international law of odious debt. The courts are reaffirming that here by saying that how the, how the borrowed money, how the taxation is used. Is very important so we come up with the doctrine of odious debt now so when we audit our public debt the audit does not end on what was borrowed the audit must go to what was it spent on and if the money benefited a regime or the owners of a regime like we are saying the eurobond did then that is not a sovereign debt that is a regime debt that cannot be paid by the sovereign it must be paid by the regime and so if it's obligatory that the, that the sovereigns have to pay it, then the sovereign have to recover it from the those people who are in the regime. So if Uhuru borrowed money that did not go to a public purpose, or Moi, or Kibaki, or Kenyatta one, then we have to go to their estates and recover that money if we pay mm. that loan to whoever is or, or claiming we borrowed the money. Mm. So this for me is a very, very funda foundational uh, judgment. judgment. There's the issue of uh, public participation and other issues that uh, the Land Council has clearly explained. They're very fundamental. But there are also issues in the decision that require me proceeding to the Supreme Court. The issue that uh, the money that has been taken from Kenyans using this law cannot be recovered because there's a presumption of innocence needs to be tested because the a presumption of innocence cannot over a, 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 a presumption of any constitutionality that mm. the word is the yes. a presumption of constitutionality cannot be relied upon to overcome a finding of unconstitutionality the court has made a finding of unconstitutionality and article 2 clause 4 of the constitution says Anything in contravention of the Constitution, including any laws, is null and void from the beginning. So the court, for me to say that the money that was taken from Kenyans in terms of the levies on housing and whatever, cannot be refunded, is something we need to go to the Supreme Court to determine. The other issue for me that is very critical to go to the Supreme Court, that the court did not address, is the question of at what point does, is the concurrence by the speakers of the two houses and i think it's article 114 or at what point do they concur and the court says that they agree with the high court that there's no need for concurrence on the finance bill because the finance bill should not go to the senate, the senate. and clearly you have seen that article 249 talks about parliament making the senate article uh, 90, uh, article 93 defines parliament as being the Senate and the National, the National Assembly. Assembly. Mm. So we need to go and test that. And what I've seen is that the National Assembly, the Senate being a small house mm. of only 47 voters. We have 67, but only 47 votes. Mm. So when an issue comes, the house becomes more deliberative because everybody knows each other. Mm. So that peer pressure makes you be, be very 
focused on what is happening. Mm -hmm. Number two, the Senate has not expanded, has not been has not been corrupted with any funds. The National Assembly has been totally corrupted by CDF. So when the MPs go there, and I think in the last budget, I think the CDF per MP was rising to 200 million. So when uh, this thing is thrown in, the executive says, scratch my back, we scratch, scratch your back. Mm. The MPs have misused this money, and then MP who tries to stand up, the, Senate, the executive simply says, okay, we'll look at your CDF accounts, and you'll go to jail. So that is CDF thing has been used to steamroll the budget through the house mm. both by persuasion that take this i will give you this take this and through coercion that you rely, you have not accounted for the last money we are going to lock you up if you get a career that's why you hear they are all in muted mode and even those who are very very eloquent and sp speak mm. on the floor of house with the poetry of angels <laughs> end up when to get the budget they begin stammering in broken prose so what am I, I'm hearing you saying, Senator, is that even out after this judgment of the Court of Appeal, yes. you are going to the Supreme Court. We are going to the Supreme Court. On some aspects of the yeah, judgment. Some two, so, so far, I've identified two critical ones. Okay. That's on the issue that the money will not be refunded. Mm. Because the standard has been that avoid law confess no rights. Okay. And that is from the, I think, 18-something in the U.S. That standard has been upheld by our, our courts that avoid law cannot be relied upon to benefit. benefit.